Welcome back to Out of Travel in Nerd Journey. My name is Alexandra, and on my show today again is Gary O'Toole from Ireland. He's a Vedic astrologer who recently published his first book or is about in the process to publish it. Now, help me with the name, Gary. Second book. Second book. <laughs> Second book, actually, yes. Jesus, I should read my script better. Okay. Tell <laughs> no, us it's about. Good. Tell us about your books, Gary, for a moment. Well, actually, yeah, the first book, I probably should go grab it, but this is the new book, Timeline yes. Astrology. Yes. Um, this is about timing techniques from India. Ah. Oh, Simply. Wow. Yeah. And the first book was about what? First book, I can go grab it. It was called Cosmic, Cosmic Bod Bodies. The oh. Ayurvedic Astrology Guide to Health and Wellbeing. Oh. How come that passed by me? I'm not sure. It actually passed by me too. <laughs> Even though it took me like eight years, to, you know, it took me about five years of writing it, but it was like a few yeah. years before then. It took me so long. And I felt like, you know, when you're making bread and it's like you, you make bread and, and then that's fine, but then you leave it and leave it and redo it and redo it. And it, it just feels a bit stale for me now. Yeah. So old, yeah. I processed it so much. Yes. Whereas this one, I wanted to get out as quickly as possible, and I wrote it in a year. Wow. And, and so what fresh. was so precious <laughs> about this book, and what came through you to came into this world? <laughs> well, this is literally 20 years of astrology study in one place for me. Uh, oh. most, most of my astrology study in, in terms of understanding the timelines, the I call them timelines, mm -hmm. the cycles that we all experience in life. So it's basically a book about how we all go through these cycles. Yeah. Phases. Yeah. Yes. You know, basically. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's a tantric con concept, isn't it, as well? As much as a I mean, Tantra comes is also part of the Vedas, I think, but it's it's that idea that things are getting born and die all the time. So this is not new. So what is the new angle for you? I mean, and maybe some people don't know this kind of life life cycle spans, but for somebody who is deeper into the matter, it feels like, okay, yeah, but that's that's something very obvious, isn't it? It's like winter, summer, you know, all these kind of season stuff. What is it that you want to highlight in that book or highlighting in this book? That's a really exactly. good question. Yeah, yeah, because it's like, yeah, most people understand that everyone has seasons in their life. And, you know, there, there's an astrology um, system for looking at that. Like the first year of life is always the moon. Mm -hmm. everybody so we have the kind of the same life stages throughout yeah. life and so the moon the first year is all about our attachments to our caregiver like the mother usually and depending on the moon's position in our horoscope in our blueprint how that goes has a big impact on our whole life mm. right yes yeah but then the next stage is from the age of one to three and that's the mars years so mm. that's when we start um looking for our independence from our mother and caregiver mm -hmm. and it's like we want to enforce our self yeah we start stomping our feet maybe and that's the terrible twos yeah. so that's that yeah. mars that mars in the chart will show how we go about getting anything we want later in life yeah, yeah. oh wow so there's natural cycles but then there are also other cycles. there's many many cycles yes a lot of cycles it's is there like like the astrology signs the zodiac signs is it like the amount of cycles you have or yeah that's also a cycle, literally, like you were born maybe with a sign rising, but that progresses mm -hmm. through yeah. each sign. Um, then there's also where the planets are and how they get triggered in different planetary cycles. Mm. So there's the natural cycles, the stages yeah. of life as we get older, but then there's yeah. also our own cycles based on our chart. Mm. So. And so... I do have, you know, like I'm very fond of what you write and I have no clue about astrology and still sometimes I have to blow over the whole kind of planet is now, you know, copulating Venus with <laughs> you know, that, that sense yeah. that sounds so garbled to many of us. And I heard that as a reflection to our last podcast that there is, you know, like there's the parts where some of us feel like we can't follow and in regards to this book where would you place it in the you know like um terms of laymen and beginners and advanced people so i was very ambitious with this one i wanted to write one that anybody could pick up because of that reason mm -hmm. i hate what you just said mm -hmm. i mean i hate the, the part of what you just said that where when i say something and someone can't follow it 
I always mm-hmm. hate that in every instance anyway, when someone's explaining something to me and it just doesn't make sense. They're using a yeah. lot of terms yeah. yes. I don't understand. Yeah. So I wanted to write it in that there is a common thread that we all experience in life. And I wanted to write about that. So yeah. the first section of the book, you might just read that one third and get everything you need from that and not go any further. But then I realized it wasn't enough because astrologers are going to read this. Most likely mm-hmm. it's mostly yeah. astrologers and a student, students of yes. astrology. The next section then will go into more of the how you read that, how you break that apart. Yeah. How it's calculated. And it also goes into the patterns in the sky and the stories we tell. Yeah. About those signs. Yes. Right. Not just the 12 sun signs, but the 27 lunar mansions. Yes. All of that. They all have symbolism, mythology, uh, Vedic yes. mythology, and yeah. gods associated. Yeah. It gets more complex as the book goes on. But then mm. it finishes with what most people are more familiar with anyway, and that's the transits. That's yes. the last piece. Actually, it's not the first piece. Most people, when they're reading horoscopes, they'll mm. first read horoscopes. It's all about transits. In fact, mm. that's the very last piece and a very small piece. It's only about that much of the book. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe a bit more. Rest of it is all about cycles. So yes. the transits are just the top layer mm. of what we experience. Yes. Wow. So the first thing that I need to ask you then is... Mm. where is the sense i mean i come back to that question with you again and again uh and i think it's still valid you know where do you see the sense in knowing what you're going through you know with the astrology while it's like almost to me we don't have free will you know we don't have free will and we are kind of guided by the by the planets and we are guided by our beliefs and how we kind of perceive or kind of in in they inform us to how to move on or values and mm. yeah so what is the point in me knowing you know there might be a, a different uh, a difficult phase ahead <laughs> so. i love this question yeah it's a really good question and it's usually the question that comes up when uh when you get this sense of that your life is mapped out in some way Yes. That's obviously mm-hmm. the first question is going to start yeah. thinking about is like, w- well, why do I want to know? Mm. It's a double edged sword. Yes. In a way. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, uh, so I'm going to say that, first of all, it depends how you use a sword. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it could be really yes. dangerous or yeah. it could be like, you know, be yeah. really good. Yeah. But one of the things I would say about it is to know it's like, let's go back. I know it's just a very cliche thing now, but to yeah. go back to the seasons. Yes. It's kind of like if you didn't have your astrology. Mm. it's kind of like you're going through life not knowing what season follows what yeah okay it's a bit like that it's a bit like you don't know that summer follows spring and you haven't planned for it at all or that mm-hmm. winter follows autumn okay you have no clue that that's happening at all yeah. ever and you go year on year and you still don't know yeah. that's happening yeah. and you're oblivious to it and that's kind of what it's like yeah. so actually i look at it differently i look at it as when you're given your map first of all it's just a map Hmm. it's not the terrain it's not yes. what's happening it's just the map hmm. second of all it doesn't restrict me in any way and it's the paradox of disciplines right where you hmm. have a discipline that free, it frees you actually hmm. and you have a discipline that frees you up to be yourself yeah actually what has given me more hmm. than that is freedom to be myself yeah. more as hmm. i go through these cycles i don't struggle against what is happening i can hmm. actually be myself more in that hmm. Oh, I love it. I love that. Mm. That sense of, you know, self-acceptance and kind of allowing yourself to come into presence as such, you know, like this is where I am and this is not the the phase where I should be looking for love, success uh, in a career or whatever. And sometimes that's hard for us to um, follow, you know, because when we are like say most of us who would consult with astrologers like you we we are stuck and we are kind of looking for the reason why we're stuck maybe and what's ahead it's almost like the the crystal ball a little bit for some of us you know like that oh is this in the stars for me right now or is it not but at the end of the day a lot of people probably come out and think like but I want success now or I want a husband now or a wife or whatever it is they desire you know and um how can astrology help us in that way? Or how do you feel enveloped in, in that uh, as, a, as somebody who almost like coaches people probably in the same way? Hmm. Yeah, that's you, these questions are great. <laughs> so good to get these good questions. So 
one of the things is it's really complex and there's a lot of layers, mm. right? So when you say somebody wants to get married or wants anything, that's on the level of the mind, obviously, mm. right? And so there's yeah. a cycle that reflects that. But then mm. there are other cycles that are going on at the same time that might show that there's something blocking that mm-hmm. okay. at the same time that you want it, that there's something mm. also blocking it. But mm. then that cycle will pass. Mm-hmm. And then, so this time it's easier to get into a relationship, but then mm. somebody might not want to be in one. Yeah. So yeah. They're, they're all working together. Yeah. And so you have to see all the layers together and also then place it in the, the stage of life. Cause there's no point talking about somebody getting married when they're 10 years of age, you know? Yeah. So it's like, you have to look at it in the context of where they are in their life, the cycles that are running at the mm. same time, all the different yeah. layers. Mm. Oh. And the, the analogy that my teacher Pearl, Pearl Finn is my teacher here mm. in Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Teacher, she used to use the analogy of the boat on the ocean. Mm-hmm. she has this picture in her house and i included it in the book as well of ganesh sitting on the boat with the holding this you know steering it yeah right with the rudder yeah so the analogy is that the boat is you mm. right? everything that you're packed and brought yeah. with right yeah the the waves are the cycles mm. this is the yeah. main piece yes the, the tide is going to take you somewhere yeah the transits are the winds and if they mm. are either helping you getting where you want to go or yeah. they're pushing against where you want to go. Yeah. And you have to look at it all together to see, are you getting where you want to go easily? Or is it struggle? Yeah. You are going to go where you need to go because the cycles show what's coming up from the depths of the ocean. Actually, mm. what's coming up from the depths of you. Mm. So you're mm. asking for it. On some level, you're making it all happen. Yeah. So it kind of gives us time to reflect on what kind of beliefs we've taken on from maybe our environment, parents, whatever. I was thinking about how somebody said to me, like, you know, if you would have wanted to become an accountant, this would have been disastrous for you, you know? And so maybe we can see these wishes that we have as exactly that, that we feel like we want something and we can ask ourselves where this want has come from. So to move deeper into our true desires, is that how I could interpret it? Yeah, I mean, again, that's so important because like, where do our desires come from in the first place? Yeah, where do they come from, Gary? Where do they come from? Well, I mean, this is a bit of a a controversial one, right? Yeah, it is. (laughs) There's two ways of looking at astrology. It's not just looking at the patterns. It is that, it's like pattern seeking. So astrologers are always looking for patterns. Like what what is this pattern in the chart and this cycle now? The other way, from a more energetic point of view, like the subtle energetics of it, is that the planets are not just planets, they're deities and they are communicating with us, not mm-hmm. in, directly mm-hmm. to our mind even, mm-hmm. and our, or our energy body or mm-hmm. any of that, but deeper still into our causal body, mm-hmm. our soul. Yeah. It's our soul that has the direct communication. Yes. And so where do our desires come from? They're mm-hmm. actually coming from a deeper imprint that actually lasts yeah. For many lifetimes that we bring in and that influences the way we think and then that will then influences the energy to do something or not Hmm. are we talking about things like um, souls that are being reborn with certain information Uh, if you want to believe in that is that what you're talking about if you want to believe in that yeah, you want to be, and you don't have to believe in it because you actually could just think that it's an imprint in this life, and that my past has led to this, and this yeah. will lead to that. And I came across a very good explanation of you know at least believing in the imprints. Not if if we don't want to think about our soul doing this travel, then we could just go the ancestral route, for example. If we think of who we come from and how many bodies were involved and how many beliefs were involved and at least if 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 you don't you know as a listener don't believe into the rebirth concept and think a little bit about like how much we do inherit in as in belief systems as in caution as in how we have to move through society in a certain terrain yeah so Mm -hmm. That, that is also probably where desires come from for me as well, you know, on, on that human DNA design level and beyond the soul. Hmm. Yeah, and that's what it is. That's what astrology mm. is pointing to, because it's also you don't just have your own astrology blueprint. You have mm. your family, yes. you have your nation. Mm-hmm. Right. And yes. So depending yeah. on where you live on the planet, that's going to mm. make a big difference to how mm. you live out your life. Right. 
Yes, absolutely. And I always love that about your newsletters, you know, that you you don't do this kind of where, you know, this magazine astrology, as we know, it's, you know, this day is going to be lucky for you and you're going to pick up the love of your life. Mm -hmm. But it's that um, the weather of the nation and the weather of the economy and the weather of the, how the world is moving forward mm. so what's ahead of us i mean you already mentioned it in a few newsletters but we might yeah, as well i mean who even, haven't tuned in <laughs> even though i don't I, I do that because i have to for like a newsletter because i'm talking yeah. to everybody i actually it's not my favorite part of astrology okay <laughs> this, this is my favorite part of astrology this yes. is one to one yeah it's where astrology mm. becomes more accurate because yes. and actually until you actually look at the individual and the individual blueprint you're not going to be accurate yes so when we talk about like mundane events, hmm. world events, I mean, yeah. um, and I do have to write about it a lot and I have I've got good at it. I think I have got good at making predictions in the world, but it's just not my favorite thing because it's yeah. not talking to the individual. I'm more interested in individuals. I'm not interested in the world, really. <laughs> so yeah. but mm. in the world, I mean, if you want to get into that, I mean, where do we begin? Like what what what's what area would you like to look at? I mean, I, I'm obviously conscious of here been asked that in the past and was labeled a fear mongerer mm -hmm. and that's no longer the case because well the gloves are off now yeah yeah there's war there's yeah. pandemics and all of yes. that right yeah. so yeah. i don't think i'll be labeled that anymore yeah. and if i don't say certain things then mm. you're like oh why didn't you warn us so it's kind of a catch-22 situation okay so we don't need to talk about it, uh, but we can go back to the, you yeah. know, I was just thinking because we're in the age of Aquarius, it's the dawn, it's a new day, you know, that kind of sense of um, these things all have to happen in also for us, you know, that we might not like the situations we are in, um, but how do change, how does change happen? And it happens through that something has to get lost or that, you know, we are incited to rethink how we've been behaving in the world. And yes, of course, it's an individual thing. And some of us are rather looking um, to the bigger heads of the world and thinking we are uh, what under their kind of whatever boon or whatever they are not granting us. But at the end of the day, it's that freedom that we talked about initially, you know, that we do have to find in ourselves in the self love and the self acceptance uh, to accept the tasks we are made here to come into this world and mm. to to keep course of that. So the big question is, but I think, you know, we all know it, it'll, it'll, how long will this last, you know, this, this, how long are we going through rough changes? Is there anything that you'd like to say? And like two years, <laughs> three years, you know, like, what are we looking at? Well, if I, to preface this, if I was to say to you in 2019, when I saw what was happening in 2020, and I was giving mm. talks at the time, and I was like, mm. very conscious of how, how will I say these things? Mm. Um, if I said to you, oh, we're going to have a, a worldwide pandemic, there'll be a war in Ukraine, it's going to spread into Europe, mm -hmm. you know, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. and all the other disasters, mm. you probably would have got quite anxious. Yes, yeah. But here we are. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so we live through things. And so mm -hmm. if I say anything about the future and that's a tendency of astrology where it's a double edged mm -hmm. sword, I was mm -hmm. saying, where it's good to know on the one hand, but then you can't not know. Yeah. And then you start living your life in the future. It's not help helpful at all mm -hmm. unless mm -hmm. you use it for what it's meant for, which is just planning the weather. Yes. You know, this is winter, this is spring, this is whatever, yeah. you know, so that's kind yeah. of how if we look at it like that, there's a few things coming down the line that are not so easy. Mm. And that's not just myself, but there are other astrologers who have predicted this, that this war is going to escalate and it could mm. lead to a world war. Now, when I say mm. world war, it's not going to be like World War One or World War Two. No, it's going to be fought very differently. But there's yeah. this divide, obviously, happening in the world and mm. between the East and West, if you want to just say generally, mm -hmm. NATO and America and mm. Eastern countries, Russia, mm. China, India and so on. They're already forming, you know, coalitions or whatever. Yes. Yeah. That's a big part of the story right now, actually, because Saturn is in a lunar mansion whose story is all about forming alliances. Yeah. OK. And the theme of this year. Yes. Anyway, yeah. OK. Yeah. So NATO reforming maybe that alliance and like regrouping mm. and now, but also on the other side in the east, them forming an alliance. And that's going to lead to this dynamic of this split and this more mm. warlike beyond mm. Ukraine situation mm. Mm. and the knock-on effect that has on the economy obviously mm. yes 
obviously it's already happening. I mean, we're in the middle of it and we're all hoping for it to end, but that is because we are still not accepting the change to me as well. I mean, it's not like, oh, we accept it and then it's going to go away. That's not what I'm saying here. It's just that we have to, as you say, we, we cannot say it's not going to be winter. You know, we're not sure how difficult the winter is going to be. Yes, I can admit to that. Or there might be an idea of how difficult it's going to be. But, it's, you know, you have to prepare for it. You're not run around in your summer clothes, so to speak, if we talk about weather. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or like towards it, you know. <laughs> right. For the economy, for example, as well. Like, you know, you mm. just, if you plan for that, because people do mm. plan for it and actually make use of that. Yeah. People actually make a lot of money when there's like a recession. Yeah. Yeah, there is people that are going to work like that. Or if you have, yeah, that, to me, it's all, to be honest, and I, I know it's hard to stay positive on that one, as you said, um, if, if, if you know what lies ahead or if you kind of believe in what you do and how you read it. But in some forms, to me, it's the, the way for me to listen in and um, make sure that I'm not stuck on all the concepts of how I need to live my life. Listen, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And I'm, yeah, that's, it's, that's really important because it's all, it's never the same. I think it was Mark Twain that said history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. Mm. So that's why when you say, you know, so that's why you can't say, Oh, world war is going to be like world war in the past. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember years ago, I was actually, it was a yoga class and I it was I was introducing uh, Vedic astrology to the group and I was just talking about things. I can't remember what it was, but I had a chart up. I think it was for America. Hmm. And then I just said glibly and I just kind of as a passing comment. And, and then hmm. when the words came out of my mouth, I realized how ridiculous that was. But I was looking at the chart and I was reading the chart hmm. and I said, oh, this looks like civil war. Mm -hmm. And everybody laughed. Mm. I laughed as well. Mm. It's yeah. ridiculous, like civil war. But here we are. It's mm -hmm. not, maybe you can say that it's not a civil war, but it's like a civil war type scenario. So it's not the same. It's not a repeat of the civil war, yeah, yeah. but it's like it's at the same theme. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So think about that when you think about a war. It's like a similar mm. in theme, but not the same. Exactly. And that's um, okay. Can can we talk about fear a little bit? And you know, I mean, I we came. I asked you, but you didn't quite answer it. You know, where do you see your kind of task in this? I said, you know, you're almost coaching. If you have to read a chart for somebody, it's it's a way of how you can translate it, how you will present it, and what is where is the aspect of fear? You know, what can you leave behind the fear, so to speak, or how can you get past the fear? with people listening to how their life is unfolding, not even how the current situation is unfolding in the world. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to answer that by actually going back to another question that I didn't answer either. And that mm -hmm. is or the, not that I didn't answer, but the topic you brought up about the age of Aquarius. Yeah. We can yes. mix it in with that because yes. what is Aquarius is actually, it's not the kind of, you know, all roses and shiny and everything is wonderful like hippy dippy sort of mm -hmm. mind. it's not at all that it's a very dark sign mm, okay. right so that brings up a lot of fear mm. um, and it's dark because it's ruled by saturn which yes. literally represents fear in ayurveda it would be vata mm -hmm. and it rules also it is also ruled by the north node of the moon which is an eclipse which is called rahu in india and it's uh, also vata but it, like a deranged yeah. vata yeah. like an unreal uh, world so what we're heading into is an age of unreality in a way, or mm -hmm. hyper reality, mm -hmm. where it's all, all online, where it's all this kind of what some people might say is a dystopian future. But and obviously that can bring up a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. The antidote to that, and especially Rahu, which creates these kinds of imaginations and like future projections, even yes. if they're positive, it can create mm -hmm. fear. Mm -hmm. Right. But then you might say, well, one person's fear is another person's excitement. You know, it's how we label it, right? <laughs> but the thing is, the antidote to that is to be in the present moment, always. Yeah, yeah. Always to come back to the present moment because it's mm. actually not real. Yes. The future isn't real. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Even if you predict it. Even if you predict it, it's not real. It's actually, no, it doesn't exist. Mm. All of these imaginations, all of these projections into the future is not real. And yet that's what Rahu does for us mm. yeah collectively and individually mm. it kind of 
gets our minds spinning on what could play out and us overlooking what is really in front of us. Is that how we can make it a little bit? Exactly. And that's the yeah. age of Aquarius. And mm. what it is great for is innovation and future oriented mm. kind of yes. projections into, yeah. oh, we can do it this way and let's plan this mm. and let's do it, shake it up. Mm. Mm-hmm. But what it's not good for is just being present. And that's why it's really necessary for us all as we enter this age Mm. And we're taken out of our bodies in a way into like mm. devices that we're going to probably be wearing more and more. Yeah. Come into our body, into the moment, into what's real. What's really real. Yeah. Not the hyper reality of this. Yes. Kind of yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, but you said not presence. And I thought like, yeah, but we need to learn presence. This is what I'm actually teaching right now. You know, like after I've done all the yoga and Ayurveda, this is coming through funny enough right now you know that the art of loving presence as i kind of swapped my name into and and now that you're saying that it makes sense to me sorry dear listener me 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 but <laughs> um and it's so difficult you know i'm just saying this because i also want to acknowledge at the same time while sitting here with gary who says all these things we both also know even we know you know and we give these kind of wisdoms into the world we know it's a practice and a practice is never perfect you cannot just step into that and then that's good you know like you you wait for the 10 years until you can marry somebody or until you get success it's it's not about that waiting state it kind of brings you deeper into the mind aspects of the future as you're told but to to come back to to the present moment um is a practice that always needs to be practiced, even for those who are, you know, far ahead on the path, maybe what we call enlightened or awakened or whatsoever. It, it just, and you have to have your nodes, you know, like your, 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 where you want to refer to. And astrology is your piece of re-referring, I think. So what do you use yourself then, Gary, when, you know, as an astrologer of bringing you into presence, what's part of that for you, a practice? as a practice Um, it's it's the thing is if i call it a practice Mm. i've learned over the years that if i call it a practice and it's something i do Mm -hmm. then i don't do it enough yeah okay (laughs) you know what i'm saying yeah catch 22 (laughs) i have have that too yes (laughs) it's like oh if i'm only meditating when i'm on the stool or if i'm only doing yoga when i'm on a yoga mat yeah. And I'm not doing it. I'm not yeah, there. exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we got to start somewhere. We got to do the dog. Got to start work. somewhere. But mm-hmm. because I started there and I realized that I was also, because that's again the catch 22, I was re- doing that. And then when I wasn't doing that, I wasn't there. Mm. Yes. And then I realized my, my practice had to be there as much as possible, even yes. in my, in chaos, even when things were going wrong. And I wasn't in the yoga class or yeah. on the meditation stool. Yeah. I had to make it part of, and mm-hmm. I have been practicing that like i've been practicing more so in the last few years i've been practicing under breathing all the time Mm -hmm. slowing my breath and pausing the breath yeah Uh, yeah. that has and really and stretching that out and that's Mm -hmm. brought me into a daily moment by moment practice yes in in so many profound ways i can't even describe really but it's definitely Mm -hmm. calmed me down it's definitely brought me into the moment more it's gave, gave me that sense of stillness and it's increased my fitness levels and all of that and all of those other side of it. Yes. Perks, yeah. Right. Yeah. But it, it, the kind of being present has been the best antidote for Rahu for me. Yes. Yeah. We're talking cold plunging. I almost sense it, you know, from saying you. Yeah. Well, I always breath. do that anyway. In my shower, I always have. Well, I always start with a warm shower. Mm. I mean, I'm Vata. I yeah. need it. I need yeah. I'm cold. Yeah. But then I always put it for the last minute to cold. Yeah. Yeah. So beautiful. Thank you for bringing that because you're right, 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 right in my eyes, at least, you know, like the the presence can only be practiced if your heart and your mind kind of want to do it. So if you're sitting there and ticking a box and sometimes we do, you know, oh, I'm just going to sing my mantras, you know, like I do love the singing right now. And then there's this switching point for me where it becomes really presence in my life, you know, where I can feel the connection and then i think like yeah i'm not singing because i need to sing my mantra this is the least last practice i ever thought i'm gonna do but it's just because my brain and my heart rewire and they come into that deep desire that we talked or we're trying to catch initially you know the desire of my soul what it does it want to express and how can it be liberated to this connection this um 
trust into something more. And I think that's what we're talking about, trying to come out of the fear part of our conversation um, here is that you, you, if you are a very rational person, you know, astrology can help you a little bit with that, with all the nodes and all the explanation, but there is an aspect that always needs to be added to um, you know, to, to survive healthily and sanely, I think. And that is the, the practice of faith and the faith that is totally lived, not a faith into something that is not manifesting, but the faith in that we are guided. That's why I brought up the free will earlier, you know. So maybe you want to add something towards the end, you know, and, and kind of help. That's actually probably a good point to, to end with as well, is that, mm. you know, you you believe that we're, believe being the word, uh, we're heading into this age of Aquarius where it mm. is kind of, you know, all tech and all advancement in many, many ways and many good ways yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, but what could be lacking is faith yes. because, you know, the institutions of faith are crumbling. And then, well, what do you replace that with? I think what you just said mm. is simply being mm. in our life. We don't yes. need the structures of the, 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 the churches and all of that and religions, mm. but we do need to have faith. Hmm. whether it's faith in just in ourselves or whatever or just being and i think that's the best antidote for this coming age yes exactly mm -hmm. yeah thank you so much i think that was your i always ask for the last gift or a word but i think you already said it there you know just keep doing your presence thing and whichever way it comes to you yeah that's what this book is about it's literally about the cycles in our life but where we're at in that and if you can just settle into that and accept this is where i'm at this is the season yeah. of my life and be yeah. in that fully instead of wanting to be somewhere else that's a real settling and and or yeah. instead of doing what other people are telling you to do which is not right for you this is where you're at this is who you are this is perfect where you are couldn't uh, couldn't finish any better so i'll leave it at that and just to add these two books are on my wish list right <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna go, go down into my wish list thing um thank you gary once again that was so amazing to talk thanks, to alex. you mm. thanks alex it's really been a pleasure yeah and thanks everybody for listening in and yeah stay in touch and we hope to see you speak to you very soon again Bye. Bye.